So let's uh, check the compost that we turned last week. See how it's done. That's not very hot. So with all the uh, heat and no rain, I guess it's probably dried out. We got rain forecasted for tonight, some storms. So a little bit of moisture on there ought to help with that. Everybody. I am about to pull all the bell peppers. We have all that we're going to need and we are getting ready to flip this tunnel, get it ready for the fall. I had to go get more buckets. Made it about halfway down. And that guy is overflowing. I still have the rest of this row, all of that side. So we still have plenty of peppers. These are still producing really well. The plants are starting to show a little sign of stress. So if we were gonna continue letting them grow, we would probably wanna fertilize at this point or something, but we have all the peppers we're gonna need, I hope. Hope I don't run out at 10 months and I was wrong, but you know. Um, I'm pretty sure we have all we're gonna need and it's just time to go ahead and start thinking fall garden, winter garden, get everything established and ready before it gets cold. Which around here could be late September or early December, you never know. <laughs> Which means we don't have time to waste just in case it's earlier. Thanks girl. Hey, what? Thank you. Are you filming? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, another project off the list. We'll call this our uh, three-in-one or more uh, permaculture garden uh, wash station, putting bench, uh, compost sifter. It does everything. So y'all are familiar with our compost sifter here that we've used before. Uh, I wanted to uh, give it more than one use, uh, you know, in permaculture design, uh, you know, everything that can have at least three uses uh, has a lot more value and uh, waste needs to become a resource. So here's our compost sifter. Uh, like I said, y'all seen that. I uh, figure if we use it as a wash station, uh, adds another use. So I built a stand for it. It doesn't mount to it. So immediately we still have our compost sifter. I just built uh, the stand, the legs, to set it on. So it just drops on there. Immediately we have a wash station. Uh, we can use this as a potting bench. I can flip it over so that uh, the wire's closer to the top. I don't think it really matters, but you know the way it's set up, easy enough. Do this with one hand. So there are the wires on top now. Um, we can lay a piece of wood on here to have a solid work surface. Uh, the water hose, everything is right here for washing the vegetables. So. so easy enough, a lot easier with two hands, but it's manageable with one hand. So all the lumber for this was uh, recycled. Uh, the compost sifter uh, was one buys, two buys that we had had. You know, we've had this thing for three or four years. Uh, the legs, the stand I just built, 
uh, some scrap wood from a neighbor that was a furniture builder. Uh, he had some extra bunch of lumber uh, scraps whenever they moved, so they gave us everything that was left. And uh, works right there. It's handy, it's centralized in the garden. Uh, and it's right here by the water and uh, where we complete this task anyways. And not to mention all the water that comes off of there goes right into that bed. So we don't lose any of the water that we're taking care of that task in the garden to keep all of that water out here rather than doing it all in the kitchen and going down the sink. So this will get all the, the initial dirt off. This is just the first washing. Uh, I won't go into storage from here, but all that dirt, uh, everything will go right back into this garden bed. And if we find that we want to kind of spread out that water, that thing's just sitting there. So we can pick that stand up, move it to a different area of the garden. Hose will reach anywhere and we can wash the vegetables anywhere uh, so that uh, you know we're applying that water wherever it's most useful. So I'm not sure that our reseeds on the tomatoes uh, is gonna work. I don't know, we had uh, some germination issues, uh, kind of erratic germination and we reseeded some areas. Some of those still haven't come up. Uh, we've lost a few plants to cutworms. Uh, so they're just, they're not timing out together. I uh, did, uh, did the layout for the fall winter garden and I don't think this stuff will be done completely uh, by the time we need to put in what we want in here for the winter. So this may all come out. Uh, hate to, kind of was hoping to get some more tomatoes, but uh, we got to think far ahead. In our growing season, even though we're inside a tunnel here, uh, things don't necessarily stop growing uh, over the winter in here, what we're going to have in here. Uh, but it's going to be really close to stopping growing. They'll just survive through the garden. So we really need the majority of the growth uh, done before the end of the season. And then we can just maintain the stuff so that we can harvest all winter. Uh, so we've got to make sure that we use that window that's available to get the most growth out of what's going to be in here all, win all winter. And we'll need this bed in production. Uh, we'll have this entire front garden in the winter garden. Uh, but like I said, Need to, need to get it grown before the, the first frost, get the majority of the growth going. So we got some tomato pan, plants that popped up, but uh, not, that, not that complete. Uh, I'd say two thirds to three quarters of the bed is where we want it. And the rest is either not showing any signs of life at all, or we've got to start over. So I'm thinking we're gonna strip this all out. Uh, we'll apply some BT uh, to deal with those cutworms. Uh, then might tarp it for a week or two and just kind of let it rest, let that do its thing. And then I've got on the schedule to come in here and plan in the next crop. Uh, that was plan B. So plan A tomatoes sounds like it's probably gone. And she's on bucket number four <laughs> on the peppers. We've only got five good buckets. So you got about uh, five, 10, 15, 20 feet to go on that side. And I'm half full. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> we got enough buckets. So this is, I don't know if she told you, it's our last pepper harvest and these plants are coming out today. Yep. So 192, 191, 90, something like that. I think we've lost one or two plants over the year. Uh, all those plants are gonna come out, uh, prep these beds and we've got plans for them. Well, it's looking a little different. Got the tomatoes out. And just in the time we've been working, there's been a change of plans again. These tomatoes, I took out the old ones, the ones with the wilt. These, and this bed that we just talked about a minute ago about taking all them out. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of the ones that are growing well, and we're gonna transplant, fill in that end, and then we'll roll up the fabric to that point, And then uh, the new crop will go in this front half. So, nothing else, constant change, adapt. And we ended up with 20 more gallons of bell peppers.
it's kind of hard cutting down these plants uh, when they're still nice and healthy. They were due a dose of fertilizer. You could tell they were uh, just needing it, but they're still producing. There's a lot of little bitty small peppers on here and we harvested off everything of decent size. So uh, will be some good compost. Well, it looks a lot different in here. All the peppers are gone. The ground cover is gone. The tomatoes here are all pushed back to that half. And this is pulled up and everything's clear over there. So went ahead and planted the beans in the rest of the row right here. So that'll be mostly green beans, a little bit of vining squash. Testing that on the trellis, see if it works. I don't think we're gonna plant the rest of this yet. Some of it's not ready. The far bed over here will be broccoli transplant, the entire bed. We got the beans in here. This front half will be carrots. We'll direct sow that. And over there will be uh, half lettuce, half spinach. So we're gonna to have to uh, mend, dress the beds and uh, prep it for sowing and then we'll do that. I think I've had enough for today anyways. It's hot. I went ahead and mowed. I'm supposed to have storms tonight, so I had to get the mowing done, which I think is the biggest waste of time of anything we have to do. It's the biggest con job on modern society. <laughs> Burn gas, make noise, and somehow it's less offensive than some livestock that'll graze it. So, but, all right. Well, progress. You're not saying much. I'm tired. Been at it for a long time. Yeah. I don't know what time it is, but started this morning, broke for lunch, and still been going. So. And it is 90. 3.30. Oh, nope, it's not 90 in here anymore. 100. Wow. See? It's 106 in here with the shade cloth. It's hot. It's very hot. So, oh, shade cloth was worth it. Yeah, it'd be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Be sure to uh, like, subscribe, share with friends, and come back to see what happens next. We'll see y'all then. Bye. Bye.